So moving on to question four, we need to uh, draw some 3D diagrams here for uh, serine. So start with your carbon atom uh, and then you want a wedge like so and then a dash like so. Doesn't really matter which way that you put your groups but you're going to have C double bond, uh, C <laughs> double O H um, on one, you're going to have an H on the other and NH2 on the other and then your R group which they've told you is CH2OH like so. Okay, right, you now need to reflect this. Um, the easiest way of doing this um, is to just swap around a couple of the groups um, but if we just keep these the same and then we do the wedge and the dash but this time I'm going to put the CH2OH on that one and I'll put the NH2 on that one like so. And those two will be mirror images of each other. Right, so for this question, um, let's have a look. I've got compound F is one of two optically uh, active isomers and I've got four carbons. I know on one of those carbons I have going to have um, a carboxylic acid. On this carbon there must be a bromine atom because this bromine is going to be replaced by NH2 in this reaction to give my alpha amino acid. I know I must have an H attached here as well uh, because an alpha amino acid always has an H attached to this carbon here. Um, so that leaves me with an ethyl group coming off like so. Okay, so that one is compound F and obviously the red carbon is the one which is chiral because it's got four different groups attached to it. Compound G uh, therefore is going to be CH3, CH2, CH, but now this is an NH2 group and then that is your carboxylic acid, like so. For uh, compound H, that's got EZ isomers, so it's obviously got a double bond and can be converted into F by a uh, reaction of HBr. So uh, that one is going to be CH3 and then you're going to have uh, CH double bond CH... Um, C O O H like so because obviously uh, you can add your H to this carbon and your Br to that carbon to give you that molecule there. So uh, it now wants me to state the type of reaction formation of F so um, uh, can be H can be converted into F, so that's going to be that reaction there, and that is going to be, of course, electrophilic addition, and then this reaction here is going to be nucleophilic substitution. And finally, for this, uh, compound H forms a polymer I. So, obviously, you can see you have got your uh, double bond there, so it is going to form an addition polymer like so where you're going to have um, CH3H for that carbon there and then you're going to also have uh, let's put HCOOH like so um, let's just extend that and put square brackets around like so Uh, right, this molecule looks horrid because it's cyclic, but just treat it the same as any other. We're going to hydrolyze this um, and we're using sodium hydroxide and it wants the structures of the products formed. So remember, when you hydrolyze this, you break the amide bonds like so. So let's just put a line through each of the amide bonds like so. Remember, an amide is C double bond O to N. So if we look at this one first of all, 
um, I'm going to make a uh, group like so. Um, then we're going to have the ring N like so. Um, that would then become NH. Remember, that would be O minus. That would be Na plus because it's in sodium hydroxide solution. Um, so that's that one done. Let's have a look at this one now. I'm going to have the same um, O minus Na plus for uh, that group. Then you're going to have your benzene ring like so. Um, just be careful. You have got that there. So you've only got one carbon. So that is going to come off there. And that's going to be NH2 like so. Okay, so it's quite an interesting question here. I've got to synthesize this ester, and this is my starting material, which is an aldehyde. And obviously an aldehyde can be oxidized to a carboxylic acid, which would give you uh, this part. And it can be reduced to an alcohol, which would give you that part there. So how would you do it? Well, you would take the aldehyde, uh, to first of all make the carboxylic acid and you would oxidize it with potassium dichromate. So, uh, so that's potassium dichromate 6. Uh, we would heat uh, or reflux um, in acidic dichromate solution. And that's the reaction there. Um, for the uh, alcohol, you would reduce it with sodium uh, borohydride, so that's NaBH4, um, so that would look like this, where of course you can represent uh, the NaBH4 with square bracket H. Okay, and then finally you would react uh, this and this together with a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst to produce your ester. So it would just be this one plus this one, which would give you your ester here, and obviously plus H2O for that. And in order to do that, you need to reflux it as well. So it goes on to ask about how we can separate a mixture of esters by gas chromatography. What are the limitations going to be? Well, if they're all esters, they're going to have um, similar retention times, um, and therefore uh, uh, come off pretty close to each other um, and also uh, there are no um, reference values so it's very difficult to then identify the actual esters. Right so you should be uh, fine um, to work out your empirical formula using this information here. Um, if you do do that then you will find it comes to be C3H6O. Okay, so this is when we're going to use the mass spectrum. If you look at the molecular ion, which is one furthest to the right, you will see this value is 116. Um, uh, so therefore, what you need to do is double that value to give you the molecular formula, which is C6H12O2. Oh, oh, O2 rather. Okay, good. Okay, so let's look at our proton NMR now. Okay, so this one here, this is in the range of OCH. Okay, and this is a clear giveaway. You've got a multiplet consisting of seven lines, and therefore it must have six neighbours. The only way that this boy is going to get six neighbours is if you have this group here. So you've got a CH3... CH3 there. So now you're looking to um, see if that fits with one of these lines here. And look at this, where hey, I've got a doublet with an intensity of 6. And therefore, um, that would be that one and that one made up. So, um, so far, so good. Now I need to look at this uh, 3 and the intensity 3 and intensity 2 group here. Well, if it's an ester, you know coming off here is going to be C double bond O, like so. How many more uh, hydrogens do I need to use up? 
Well, I've got five that I need to do, hence the three and the two. This is a clear pattern for a CH3, CH2 group. Um, so it's really good to try and identify this because this is going to be split into a triplet by these guys and that is going to be split into a quartet by these guys, which is what you've got there. So always look for a triplet quartet pattern and then that tells you you've got CH2, CH3 like so.